EBS Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm Rochelle Travers, and this is The Leader. In case you've forgotten, just two days before the death of Queen Elizabeth II, we got a new Prime Minister. I'm honoured to take on this responsibility at a vital time for our country. What makes the United Kingdom great is our fundamental belief in freedom, in enterprise and in fair play. Our people have shown grit, courage and determination time and time again. Now the official period of mourning has ended, it's time for Liz Truss to get to work. She's got a packed week ahead of her, foreign trips, big statements and a fiscal package to set into motion. I promised I would deal with the soaring energy prices faced by families and businesses across the UK. And today I am delivering on that promise. This government is moving immediately to introduce a new energy price guarantee that will give people certainty on energy bills. It will curb inflation and boost growth. And at a time when we're experiencing soaring prices, crippling fuel costs and the prospect of recession, it can't come quick enough. But where exactly will she start? And what are some of the first challenges she'll face? Here to explain is Robbie Smith, the Evening Standard's common editor. Well, she's had to deal with a once in 70 years event, which is the death of the Queen and an incredibly beloved Queen, as the 10 days of mourning we've just had uh, have shown very, very clearly. We are all devastated by the news that we have just heard from Balmoral. The death of Her Majesty the Queen is a huge shock to the nation and to the world. Queen Elizabeth II was the rock on which modern Britain was built. It was not necessarily a difficult start, though, for Liz Truss. What she had to do was just be dignified, uh, be respectful, and essentially keep a low profile. And she did all of that with aplomb while the spotlight was elsewhere. Now she has to begin the much more difficult task of dealing with the many, many problems that she faces. Robbie, it's back to business for Liz Truss now. What's on the agenda for the new PM this week? At the moment, she's in New York for the United Nations General Assembly, uh, the annual gathering of world leaders. Uh, On Wednesday, there's an energy statement. Uh, On Thursday, there's a health statement. Uh, And on Friday, there is the fiscal event, which is basically her and Kwasi Kwarteng's mini budget. So it's a very packed week. As you mentioned, she's already on her first foreign trip. She arrived in New York yesterday for the annual United Nations General Assembly. What will she be hoping to achieve while she's there? On the general level, she wants to introduce herself again to world leaders. Don't forget she met many of them at the funeral and there was a chance to talk to them. Uh, Introduce herself again, uh, set out her stall so they get to know who Liz Truss is, who they're dealing with, what kind of person is now leading Britain, how they're different to Boris Johnson, how she is different to Boris Johnson. The clearest uh, example for how the relationship can reset is Emmanuel Macron. There, it is already difficult because when asked whether he was a friend or foe during the Tory leadership contest, Liz Truss replied that the jury was still out. Um, Macron, I think, has won people over a lot in Britain by his grace uh, for the death of the Queen, uh, his wonderful tributes and his general behaviour. He may have mollified a lot of the anger towards him and that may lead to a rapprochement between the two. More specifically, she will be trying to work out details of uh, particular issues uh, that are of the moment, namely the US trade deal and the Northern Ireland Protocol issue. She has already said, to some surprise, that the US trade deal is essentially not going to happen. It's not even a medium-term prospect for talks, which this had been a huge thing for Brexit. People had said, we can leave the EU, we're going to get a fantastic trade deal with America, uh, and all will be rosy. It has not happened, it is not going to happen. Liz Truss has admitted this. People know that this has been the case uh, in theory, but in practice, the British government has never so clearly said it. The new PM has also already discussed financial support to Ukraine. What has she said about that? So Liz Truss has said that she will match or exceed the funding given to Ukraine over the past seven months. This is a big sum. This is £2.3 billion. It was Boris Johnson's biggest success uh, 
even greater perhaps than the vaccine rollout and it won him a lot of friends around the world and support here. Liz Truss is very, very keen to be seen as the successor of that policy. The Britain is the second largest donor of military aid to Ukraine after the US. And Liz Truss, who styles herself as a fighter for freedom, will want to keep that appearance up. Let's go to the ads. Stay there to hear more about our new prime minister getting back to business. I think we're going to see a prime minister who is very firm, very decisive, but who has the capacity to explode and to fall apart as Theresa May and Gordon Brown did when they don't have that supple PR-like quality that other PMs had. Whilst you're here, why not give the leader a rate and follow? Welcome back. Robbie, as we mentioned earlier, we're expecting a fiscal package to be announced on Friday. Lots of people are going to be wanting to know what's going to be in that. What are the rumours so far? So the rumours are that national insurance is going to be cut, that a planned rise in corporation tax is going to be ditched, and possibly, quite intriguingly, there will be investment zones with places you can go where there will be tax cuts for those who live there. This is all part of Liz Truss's strategy for growth. As she sees it, she wants to grow the pie. That means the rich getting richer. In her eyes, that will also mean the poor getting richer. Not everyone agrees. What are some of the other challenges she'll be facing this week? She will be facing a Labour Party that is trying to work out a new strategy for dealing with the new PM. We're in the middle of a national emergency. People are really scared and families don't know if they can warm their homes this winter and businesses ask if they can keep the lights on. That is why the Labour Party spent the summer fighting for a price freeze so that no household would pay a penny more on their bills. It previously had a great plan of attack against Boris Johnson that was working very, very well, uh, kind of essentially crucifying him for the way that he ran government, Partygate being the most obvious example. Now Labour have to rejig their strategy to deal with a Tory party that actually looks quite a lot like the Cameron Osborne government of 2010 and 2015, which beat the Labour Party roundly twice. So this is difficult territory for them, more difficult in some ways than when they faced Boris Johnson. So they are trying to work out a plan to deal with the Tories and a plan also to look like a government in waiting. What do you think will be her biggest test in her first week as PM? In a short-term sense, it's whether the markets buy her plan, the pound could crash, the financial markets could react badly, which would hold her below the waterline very, very fast. Slightly more medium term, it's about whether her own party buys what she's proposing. She did not have many MPs supporting her, either at the first go in the Tory leadership contest or in the last round of voting. She got a small number, 113 out of 357 MPs, which is not big. The Trussites aren't really there. So her most difficult task would be convincing, once she's convinced the markets, her most difficult task would be to convince her own party. The jury is still out on that. And finally, what kind of a Prime Minister do you think Liz Truss will be? In some ways, Liz Truss is the least polished Prime Minister we've had. Perhaps less polished than Theresa May or even Gordon Brown. But she has very, very clear ideas. She knows where she's starting from, she knows where she wants to go, and she knows, she thinks, how she's going to get there. I think we're going to see a Prime Minister who is very firm very decisive, but who has the capacity to explode and to fall apart, as Theresa May and Gordon Brown did, when they don't have that supple PR-like quality that other PMs had. And that's it from The Leader. This podcast is back tomorrow at 4pm.